In the last video, we looked at Phi 3 beyond benchmarks. So I thought we would repeat the same thing uh, for Lama 3 as well. So in this case, case, we're going to be testing Lama 3 on RAG, its ability to do query routing, and uh, tool usage or function calling. Now, function calling is not officially supported in Lama 3, so we're going to be using the Grok implementation for that. To test RAG, we need a source of data so for that, we're going to be using this article from Verge, the synthetic social networking is coming. This is the same article we tested with Phi3. As always, a link to this uh, notebook is going to be in the video description. So first we need to install all the required packages uh, in order to run this notebook. We're going to be using Llama index to implement uh, the RAG pipeline. Now, first we need to uh, load the contents of this web page. So for that, we are using the beautiful soup uh, web reader. It's an amazing library for reading HTML content. We provide the URL of the website that we are working with, and it will convert it into a document object. Next, we need to load our LLM. Uh, so we're going to begin testing it with Llama 3, 8 billion uh, version, but later on, I'll show you the results for 70 billion uh, version as well. And in order to, uh, load the model, we are going to be using the amazing Grok API, which is one of the fastest, or actually the fastest inference API currently available on the market. So here uh, I have my uh, all API keys as secrets. So I will just enable access to the Grok API key, right? And we are good to go. So it will load my Grok API key and we create this uh, Grok LLM object. The model name right now we're providing is Lama 3 8 billion. And later in the video, I'll show you how to load the 70 billion as well. You just need to change the name of the model. All right, uh, if we are doing RAG, we also need uh, embedding model. Uh, so for this, we are using the open source uh, embedding model, which is the BGE small English embedding. If you want to use Mistral embedding, OpenAI embedding, even Jenna embedding, or Cohere has its own embedding, so you can just provide those here, okay? And we're setting both the LLM as well as the embedding model in the settings of Llama index. All right, next we need to create our vector store. So for this video, we will be creating two different vector stores. Uh, and the reason will become apparent when we are looking at uh, the query routing. So first uh, we create a vector store, which will convert a document into chunks, compute embeddings for each chunk, and then uh, store those in this vector store. The other uh, vector store or uh, actually summary index is basically summarized version of the document. So these are two different options that we have and we are going to switch between them when we're doing query routing. Okay, next we have some helpful logging code. This will keep track of everything that is happening. Now let's look at uh, how the query works. So we create our vector store and based on the vector store, we will create a query engine. And then we pass on our query to this query engine to get responses from the model. So the first uh, question is, how do OpenAI and Meta differ on AI tools? And here's the response that we get uh, based on the query that is going to be passed through the uh, vector index that we just created. So the response is OpenAI tends to present its uh, products as productivity tools simple utilities for getting things done. Meta, on the other hand, is in the entertainment business. And the answer is pretty accurate based on the context that we have provided. Now, one thing I have noticed is that uh, the Llama 3 models uh, actually tends to generate pretty short and concise responses compared to what we saw for Phi 3 models in our previous video. All right, so here's another one. What are the new features added by OpenAI to ChatGPT? So they were talking about uh, adding voice and um, image generation or image upload ability. So it actually correctly identified that it has added two new features to ChatGPT, the ability to interact uh, with its large language model via voice and the ability to upload images and ask questions about them. Uh, in the previous video, uh, Phi3 was actually confusing some features that were added to Meta AI uh, with features added to ChatGPT, but the 8 billion version of Llama 3 uh, does a pretty amazing job at retrieving the correct information. Now I asked the same question, uh, but regarding Meta AI, 
and it actually correctly identifies that uh, Meta AI uh, unveiled 28 personality driven chatbots to be used in uh, Meta's messaging apps. This is actually correct, so this is pretty good. Okay, next we're going to look at its ability to do query uh, routing. So what exactly is query writing? Let's say you have multiple databases. For example, you are a teacher and you create a vector base for mathematics. The other is for physics. And let's say the other one is for chemistry. Uh, and the user uh, is trying to learn something. So that they ask a question. Then this query router has to decide which vector store to use in order to generate an answer. So if the question is related to physics, it will retrieve information from the uh, physics vector store. If it's related to mathematics, it will retrieve data from there, right? And you can expand this uh, to other uh, use cases as well. For example, if you're working in a company, there are different, um, let's say, de departments. You can create vector stores for each department and then depending on the query, as well as the user uh, authorization level, you can detect or you can select which uh, vector store to use, right? So it's a very important ability to have. In this case, the query router is basically an LLM, which will decide which uh, vector index to use that is going to be selected and is going to be used to generate responses. Now, to keep it simple, uh, so we create two uh, different tools uh, and we're going to be passing on to our query engine. The first one is the vector store that we created and it's useful for searching for specific facts. The second one is the uh, summary tool or the summary index that we created, which is useful for summarizing an entire document, right? Uh, so these are going to be the two different uh, vector stores or vector indices, right? And the uh, query engine tool uh, using the LLM needs to determine which one to pick depending on the question that user is asking. Okay, uh, so we created a multiple selector. So we provided a list of tools to the router query engine that we are going to create, right? And depending on the context, it has to select either one or multiple of these available tools. So the tools in this case is either uh, the vector index that we created or the summary index that we created, right? And it can select multiple if need it needs. Uh, so the first question was, what was mentioned about Meta? summarize what is mentioned about other companies in the document. Now, it actually selected only the first uh, uh, tool to use, which is the vector index. And the reason is the question is asking to summarize what is mentioned about Meta, which implies searching for specific facts, making choice one the most relevant, right? So it thinks that since it's talking about Meta, so it has to uh, figure out very specific information, right? And here is the response that it generates, not the best of responses. It seems like it kind of uh, copied uh, a sentence from the provided context, right? But uh, at least it was able to uh, correctly identify that we need specific information about Meta. Now, for some reason, it completely ignored the second part of the document, so which is a bit concerning. Uh, then I kind of expanded this. I said, summarize what was mentioned about OpenAI. And in this case, it selected the second option. So it's going to be using the summary index. And the reason is the question is asking to summarize what was mentioned about OpenAI, which implies, in, which implies summarizing an entire document, uh, making option two the most relevant choice, right? And then it provides a summary of what was mentioned about OpenAI. And the summary is actually pretty good based on the provided context that we have. Okay, then I actually wanted to see uh, how uh, a 70 billion model is going to respond. So here I changed the model to the 70 billion model. We are still using the Gronk API. Now, in this case, the responses for same queries are actually much better. So the first part was what was mentioned about Meta. And rather than simply copying um, a sentence from the document, it actually kind of summarizes everything and talks about the 28 personality driven chatbots that are created uh, by Meta, which are going to be used its, in its messaging app. And then it also says, as for other companies, OpenAI is mentioned as announcing updates to ChatGPT, including voice features that allows for users to interact with language model via voice. This feature gives uh, ChatGPT a more human-like personality, right? So this model is definitely doing a much better job at uh, retrieving information when there are multiple parts in the query. 
and it does a pretty good job again at uh, this summarize what was mentioned about OpenAI as well and in this case it is trying to use the uh, summary index rather than the vector store so as you would expect uh, the 70 billion model does a really good job at query query routing uh, for most more uh, complex uh, queries all right so the last part we want to look at is its ability to do function calling now lama 3 doesn't officially supports it but croc has an implementation for tool usage which is basically uh, function calling Okay, let's first try to understand what function calling is before we look at an example. So there are scenarios in which you ask the LLM and it doesn't has the ability to uh, provide you an answer. So in that case, uh, using some external tools is going to be helpful. So for example, uh, if you ask a complex mathematical question, it's better for the LLM to do, use a calculator rather than doing the mathematics by itself, right? So how does it work? So first you ask a query, the LLM has to decide whether it needs to use an external tool or not. If it thinks it doesn't need to use an external tool, the LLM will generate a response for you, right? So there are still uh, two calls to the LLM. Now, in case if it needs to use an external tool, then first it needs to find what the appropriate tool is for that specific task. Uh, that's basically picking the tool then it needs to make a call to that function uh, usually the usually the tool usage is implemented as a function it will get a response from that uh, function and then that is fed into the LLM and the LLM is going to generate a response now grok has implemented the same thing as a external loop uh, for lama 3 and the mixtral MOE models so in this case, we're going to be using a notebook provided by Grok. So we first need to install the Grok client for um, the Python. We set the API keys exactly the same way we did it before. Now I'm using the smaller model and it also does a pretty good job. The bigger model is definitely much better. Uh, the dummy function that we are going to be calling is uh, we want to get scores of NBA games. So there are different scenarios in which we have different teams uh, and there are different associated uh, scores in this, right? So depending on the input, it will pick a team and give us the uh, final score. All right, so here's the, how the main loop looks like. So this is the first uh, system message that goes into uh, the first call of the LLM. And uh, the system messages, you are a function calling uh, LLM that uses data extracted from get uh, game score function to answer questions around NBA game scores include the team and their opponents in your response okay so the user asks a question that is going to become part of this initial uh, message or initial prompt right here we are defining the tools so you, you can have multiple tools but we are just sticking to the one that they have provided in their example uh, and the main thing here is to uh, make sure that you include very detailed description of what different tools or function do, right? Because based on this, it will select uh, which tool to use, very similar to which uh, index to use when we were looking at the query routing example, okay? And then what is going to be the output? So that is the team name uh, that the model is supposed to return, okay? Uh, and then like some uh, description around uh, what the tool does. So for example, it's supposed to use the team name that is going to be a string and the name of the NBA team. Okay. Now, uh, so this is going to become uh, the system message or the, ex uh, the initial query that will feed to the LLM. So here we, we are making the first LLM uh, call, right? Now in this case, uh, the way the Grok has implemented is in the response, you can check whether it decides to use any tool or not. If the uh, tool usage flag is true, that means that it wants to use a tool. So you'll have to make a second call to the LLM, right? So in this case, we first check if the tool uh, usage is true or not. If it's true, then we look for what tool was used. And uh, right now we have only one option. So it will just make a call to that tool it will get the response from that function that is fed again as an input uh, to the um, 
LLM itself. So that will become the second query. So basically, we are talking about this step, get a response, fed into the LLM to get a final response. Right? And that second response is the one that is going to be shown to the user. So for example, here's the first query. What was the score of the warrior game? So it goes through the step-by-step -step process of whether it needs to uh, make a function call or not. So it actually decides that I need to make a function call and the uh, team name that it selects based on what is provided in the prompt is uh, Golden State Warriors, right? Uh, and it will get a final response that says, according to the call, the Golden State Warriors uh, and their opponent is the LA Lakers. The final score was this in the, uh, in the favor of Warriors, right? So it actually uh, got the response correct. Now, if I uh, ask something irrelevant to the uh, functions or tool usage, uh, so it actually goes through the whole thing again. Uh, but in this case, it says, I'm glad you're um, interested in knowing the purpose of life, but I would like to take a different approach. How about talk about the game between uh, LA Lakers and the Golden State Warriors, right? So since it's a smaller model, it wasn't able to actually correctly deduce that there is absolutely nothing about the NBA games. And it decided to use the uh, LA Lakers as an input to the function call. But if you replace it with the bigger 70 billion model, then uh, for the same query, now it doesn't have any problem. So it says, it tries to figure out whether I need to use uh, a function call or not. It decides that I don't need to use a function call because uh, it's not really relevant to the uh, function that is available or tools that, that are available. So it says, uh, as a final response, that's a deep and complex uh, question. I'm happy to provide some insight. And it gives us pretty detailed answer and it uh, doesn't do any uh, tool call, which is pretty amazing. So the bigger model is definitely a lot uh, smarter, which is expected. But I think even the smaller 8 billion model, model is pretty capable, uh, but there might be some situation in which you definitely want to try the bigger uh, sibling. Okay, so this was a more of a practical use cases of this model and its abilities. And as I said, uh, both these 8 billion as well as the 70 billion models are pretty amazing. Um, Meta has done a really amazing job with these models. So I would definitely recommend everybody to check out Grok. Uh, they also provide a free API, which is extremely fast. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you want me to do, do comparison of other models for uh, similar tasks. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.